<laughs> All right, let's get into the kitchen. We're gonna start cooking. First, gotta have my apron because, well, we all know how messy I am. <laughs> well, I'll DM you in a month. Well, no, if you watch my video, I'm actually available by direct message on Mondays and Fridays. So I'll be checking messages twice a week. So that's the only time. Mondays and Fridays. Otherwise, you can talk to me here. Here I am. <laughs> here I am, baby. All right. Ramen rolling. <laughs> Better make something good? I always make something good, Phantom Killer. That's what I do. <laughs> and if it sucks, shit happens. <laughs> but more often than not, it doesn't suck. <laughs> I was talking to my coworkers I left work yesterday, and because of that, I forgot my jacket and couldn't go back. Or would have missed my bus. I still have a sweater, but damn, was that one of the coldest walks home. I bet it's been like 30 degrees is the high right now. Like, I think it's 35 or something last I looked at my phone. Burr. And the sun's out right now, so yeah, I couldn't imagine. All right, I forgot where I put my pot. ceramic heavy as hell minor La Crusade pot that you can feel it's like it's got weight so you want a big pot like this if you don't have um, a Dutch oven you can use just a regular pot because we're really just boiling things anyway but I kind of prefer to use these I don't know it might boil faster if I use the other one I don't know let's try this so we're gonna fill it up with water <laughs> Water's fine. Okay, but I won't be on social media. Are you uh, are you doing the challenge with me, Athlon? Are you taking a break as well? I'm excited if someone's doing the challenge with me. Quitting social media for a month, oh my god. <laughs> I think a lot of people think I'm insane. I have no doubt. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Call me crazy. I already feel like I've done so much in two days. It's insane. <laughs> so worth it. Come on, water. Okay. You want to keep like an inch and a half from the top of your pot because you're going to do a rapid boil on this. So you want to make sure it's got room to do its thing and not flood your place. So we're going to turn the pot onto super hot on my ultra burner. We don't need the lid. I'm going to put it back over here. <clears throat> back to work, gotta lurk. All right, sounds good, unmasked. You are Athlon? Yay! That's awesome. Congrats. Let's do this together. <laughs> do you guys see my, um, This is my, my Christmas nutcracker. It's a chef. Because <laughs> of course it is. But he works. <laughs> I haven't tried to crack a nut in him because, you know, I'm allergic. But if you wanted to, I turned on the wrong burner. It's like, why is the back one on? Okay, we need a few things. We need shiitake mushrooms. show you traditional ramen before um, and that's 
that's not what we're doing today because that would take hours. Today we are doing a quickie ramen. So this way, the broth, you're still making a homemade broth. Oh, I forgot the julia. So for this one, you're still making a homemade broth, but it only takes about a half hour versus one to three hours. And you don't have to strain it like you do the traditional one. And you don't have to scrape for foam from the seaweed and things like that. So it's much easier. So if you're looking for like a quick ramen, but you don't want to eat instant ramen packets, which are disgusting, <laughs> um, you can totally do this. You can get your ramen noodles frozen. Um, I'll show you what I'm using. So I have these. They are Nona Lim Tokyo Ramen, and this is just frozen ramen noodles. There's two packs in here. These are vegan. Um, all most ramen noodles are vegan, so good to know. Um, but there's two packs in here, and uh, all you have to do is pop it in your boiling water, and it's done in like record time. Pretty much the same amount of time an instant pack would take. So all you really have to make is your broth and your veggies do on top. So this is the ramen I like to use. You can get this in Whole Foods. definitely more expensive than instant ramen, but your body will thank you. <laughs> I don't. There's like a thick level of toxicity floating around the social networks and I need a relief. I think that's awesome. I think it's great you decided to do it too. And um, yeah, <laughs> nothing but good things I think could come from taking a break. So I hope it works out for you too. And I think that's really cool that you're participating as well. I was hoping some people on Power Up would join me. But uh, I wasn't sure. All right, so I'm just washing this leak because it's pretty dirty. And you need to hang it upside down to get all the excess water out. So we're not going to use all of this, but we're going to use quite a bit. And then we also have some shiitakes. And oh my goodness, I'm just going to dump these out because... These are like the prettiest shiitakes I've seen in a little while at the store. Look at the size of these. These are huge. This one especially. This is like a perfect shiitake. Like if you're looking for shiitakes and you don't know how to find what a good shiitake looks like, this is it. So you can see it's very uniformly colored. The stem's intact. There's no breakage. And the top is smooth and pretty consistent in color with no spots. Ha oh, ha the holy grail of shiitake. So usually at the store you find them, they're like this size. Whoa. Huh. Whoa. <laughs> so this ugly one I got because we're going to put that in our stock along with that ugly one. And the other ones we're going to set aside because we're going to actually use them to top our ramen. And uh, those ones are just going to be flavoring the broth. Ramen sounds so good right now. Ramen always sounds so good. I love ramen. I love me some ramen. What just happened? Uh, I'm confused. Hang on, something just freaked out on my computer. So changing my name somehow really messed up my bot for Streamlabs, and so stuff's not coming through correctly. So if I miss anything, holler at me because I think stuff's messed up. <laughs> Just say something, because weird things are going on right now. 
Like my my latest tipper stat, I think, is from like ages ago. So I'm a little confused. A little confused. Okay, back to cooking. Garlic. This was a little berry container, but it works so well to put your garlic in. So if you were doing traditional, you would just cut this in half and not peel it. But because we don't want to strain this later, we're going to actually get the garlic cloves out of the head of garlic and peel them so we don't have to strain. So a little more work now, a little less work later. One, two, three, four, five. We want five cloves of garlic. These are kind of small, so we're going to go with six. paper. I actually found an instant ramen um, that I thought Daniel might try. Uh, what is it? But it's like way better than, you know, like top ramen or munch ramen, but it's Koyo shiitake mushroom ramen. And it's got organic noodles, no MSG. It's vegan, which he doesn't care about that, but the ingredients are like really quite nice. I mean, it's the noodles or organic wheat flour salt. The soup packet is shoyu powder, which is soybeans, wheat, sea salt, miso powder, which is soybeans, rice, sea salt, kombu powder, shiitake mushroom powder, shiitake mushrooms, onion powder, sea salt, sugar, green onion, garlic powder, ginger powder, black pepper. That's a pretty good list of ingredients, especially when you compare it to the shit that's in like munch ramen or instant ramen. So I'm curious about this. I don't know, I might try it. I don't eat a lot of processed food, but you know, once in a while you're like having a day where you're like, fuck cooking. That might be one of those occasions. <laughs> okay, we got our garlic here. We're just gonna break the skin off. It's okay if the garlic clove kind of explodes a bit. It'll just add a little extra flavor to the broth, so don't worry about it. They don't have to be like perfectly intact or anything like that. So just peel. If you weren't doing a vegetarian or vegan ramen, you could also add like chicken bones to your water and kind of get a little flavor from the chicken bones that way. It's really good if you buy whole chickens and want to use all the parts, um, which is actually how we used to buy meat when we, when we both ate meat. Um, we'd get like a whole chicken and try to use as much as we could of it. Uh, so that's a really good way to try to incorporate you know, some of the bones and you get some of the, the collagen and the gelatin and all the really good things about that for you from those bones. Um, okay, so we're gonna cut the little, you can see there's like a gnarly end on each clove of garlic. We just wanna cut that off and also any like weird bits like that, we'll just remove. Nothing major. So that is our garlic. Super easy. Our shiitakes, we actually don't have to do anything. These are really clean, so I don't even need to worry about cleaning them. They are ready to go. Love me some garlic. Yeah, garlic is awesome. I love garlic too. I'm super allergic to garlic, so my nose is already running just being above it. But, um, <laughs> but I eat it anyway. All right, so for this, you need about a one and a half to two inch piece of ginger root. And um, ginger root has like a papery skin on it. You can see this, and you can eat that. It's totally fine, but if you want, you can peel it off. So if you want to peel it off, using a spoon and just kind of scraping down it is probably the easiest way. And uh, I actually make a lot of ginger tea, which, is just fresh ginger root and lemon, like fresh lemon juice. And uh, it's freaking amazingly good. And it's so healthy for you. And it actually flushes like all the toxins out of your system. So it's really good for like winter time when you don't know, make sure you're not getting all the crap that everybody else is getting. You don't want to be sick. But anyway, using the spoon makes shorter work of peeling a bunch of ginger because for that tea, you have to peel just a boatload of it. You could also buy it in like packed in water in the store, but I think fresh is way better. Just anytime you can use fresh anything, I think it's pretty much better. So that's my thought on there. 
So this doesn't have to be perfect because like I said, you can eat the skin, it's not gonna kill you or anything. But I just prefer it without, so I also think it adds a little more flavor to the broth when it's peeled because the flesh is exposed and the water can like circulate around it. So I think it just adds a little extra depth of flavor by removing the skin. But if you're in a hurry, this is quickie ramen, you could totally skip this and no one would judge you. <laughs> so I started to put some recipes on my new blog and um, I'll be adding recipes all the time uh, as I'm able and since I'm not on social media and I have all this newfound time, you can probably expect to see lots of them. <laughs> but uh, I have, I think, two recipes up so far. I just announced the blog this last week, so I have two recipes up so far and um, I have one restaurant review and then my post yesterday, which has kind of made a, a splash, which is that I'm quitting social media for a month. So if you're interested in checking that stuff out, you can visit my new blog at foodfluent.com. This side is being really stubborn. Yesterday I like wrecked my thumb. I was taking out cardboard and you can see it's like all bruised and luck, gnarly. <laughs> kind of hurts to do this. Okay, so there's all our skin. We're just gonna get it off our board. It's probably easier to get it off the board with a flat surface instead of a spoon. <laughs> so who's playing what today? Who's playing games? I, uh, I bought Bloodborne on PlayStation. Since I'm not doing online gaming for my month, for my challenge of quitting social media and online gaming, I bought Bloodborne on my PlayStation and I'm really excited to be starting it because I'm a big Dark Souls fan. And um, I'm also going to maybe start doing speedruns again for Dark Souls because that is okay in my guidelines. <laughs> I can do Dark Souls streams, so let me see some of that. I would stream Bloodborne, but I don't have a... My Elgato only goes with my Xbox, like it doesn't, it's not compatible with my PlayStation, I don't think, so. I am raging hard at some call of bullshit. <laughs> Is it bad today? Are you by yourself? Because randoms are the worst. I will say, randoms fucking suck. They make me rage pretty hard. <laughs> pretty hard. I think... When I play with randoms, more often than not, that's when I like shut off the Xbox. And I don't do that like ever. But randoms seem to have that effect. <laughs> is veganism good for the body? Oh my gosh, yes, Harry. It is so good for the body. Um, I have documented my plant-based journey over the past year and I've lost over 35 pounds. I've lost four pant sizes. I have more natural energy, my hair and nails and skin are a lot healthier. Um, my blood work is awesome, I'm not deficient in anything. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I couldn't recommend it enough to anybody. It's also um, helped cure me of constant and frequent attacks from a autoimmune disorder I suffer from. Um, that causes like extreme vertigo where I can't tell which way's up and the room just spins like one direction and it causes me to fall which can be pretty dangerous as you can imagine so um, I've only had two attacks from that in the past year and before I started the veganism I was having them every four weeks so yeah it's it's got amazing health benefits I am with ace but I'm having one of those days where nothing is working oh it sucks I bet you're both raging. <laughs> Super rage. Okay, how do I want to cut this? I only need half of this, and it's too big to go in my pot, so I'm trying to decide how I want to go about it. I think we're gonna just cut it in half. So this is a leek. They're really beautiful onions. They have a very mild flavor. So if you're not a big onion eater, give leeks a try. They have a really fresh, fragrant onion -y smell, but it's not like a stinky onion, it's like it's more similar to a chive, which is like a really small version of a green onion, kind of. <laughs> um, so if you like chives, you'll really love leeks, and they just, they smell really good, they add a really nice flavor, they're very healthy for you, they can help fight all sorts of things off. So if you haven't tried these, give them a go. So we're just going to cut 
cut it in half like that. And um, because I don't want to strain later, I'm going to get some kitchen twine. We're going to tie this bad boy up. <laughs> Might play some Battlefield 5 single player. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You having to find new games to play too, huh? <laughs> yeah, the only game I've played since I started the challenge is Bloodborne. And um, uh, I've only played through to the first lamp, which is like the equivalent of a bonfire. So I haven't fought like any bosses or anything too dangerous yet. It's been pretty chill, but I'm expecting that'll change really quickly. We'll see. Oh, I guess I've also been playing a little bit of Minecraft with Daniel. So I've been playing a little Minecraft. He renewed his realm, so we've been playing on his realm, but not very often. He's had really long work days. He's been working like 14 hour days, because um, he's at the end of his sprint. So it's been nuts for him. Busy, busy, busy. So I've just been busy myself doing food fluent things, <laughs> making videos, learning things, doing all the things. I play leeks make better onion rings. Really? I've never tried making onion rings out of leeks. Huh, how do you do that? Because they're not really like a round shape like an onion. How do you make onion rings out of these? I'm just cutting the excess string off, but you don't need to. I just don't like it floating about all haphazard and such. <laughs> okay, this is gonna go back in the fridge, which I've put all my garbage on this bag, and so now I need to get my bag back. Been, I've been playing COD every day for like, I don't know, since it came out. How long has that been? Like 60 days? A month and a half? Something like that? Just stupid amount of COD. Just wow. <laughs> I've been playing a ton. <laughs> Things have to change, guys. <laughs> so yeah, it's like single player games. Well, what do I play? And my favorites are Dark Souls. I even got my new custom controller I was telling you about that I'm going to do a video on later. I got it etched with Praise the Sun. Sun bro! Yeah! <laughs> you Dark Souls people know what I'm talking about. That garlic's making my nose itch. I'm not allowing myself to see Thieves, though, since I mainly play solo. Yeah, I could play COD still. I could still play Call of Duty, I just can't play it online. Or with friends, I guess. So I can still play it by myself if I wanted to, but not with friends, because I'm trying to, you know, separate myself from social media and that I need to rely on online gaming for my social interactions. Like I'm trying to, you know, reset. So yeah, you could still do that. I get that. That's fair. I'm here for the ramen. Hey, food stamp. We are ramening it up. Okay. So we got a teaspoon, a teaspoon, not a tablespoon of better than bouillon mushroom base organic. That's going to go right in our boiling water we got over here. If you swirl it around in the pan a little with the hot water, it'll come out completely clean versus trying to scrape it out with your finger or something. It won't work. So just swirl. Do the swirl. All right, so this is what's going to be our base for our quickie ramen broth. So we have half a leek, two shiitakes, six, seven cloves of garlic, and a one half inch chunk of ginger. And it's going to go right in the pot. It's all going to float for the most part. Probably would take you a lot less time if you weren't as chatty as I am. <laughs> so if you're in a hurry, it can be much quicker. I saw an episode of Good Eats and he made them. Really? Onion rings with leeks. That's very interesting. I'm going to have to check that out because I really like onion rings. Onion rings are delicious. I don't eat them very often, but I can make an exception. <laughs> I don't really have a way to deep fry them. I don't even have enough oil in the house. We don't have like vegetable oil or anything. We just have sesame oil because I do so much Japanese and Korean food. And we have avocado oil because 
I make so much Mexican food, and we have a little bit of olive oil. Oh, and coconut oil. But we don't have like vegetable oil for deep frying. I'm very excited. Well, I'm glad, me too. All right, we're gonna get started on the vegetables. Back to the refrigerator. So we're gonna get some Napa cabbage. A zucchini. It is a goal for me. I hope you do, food. I hope you do. All right, the, I could not pass this up today. This is a uh, Napa cabbage, or sometimes it's called Chinese cabbage. It has bugs on it. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to wash it. So don't be afraid, because organic cabbage and lettuce sometimes has bugs. But this is a beautiful color for this Napa cabbage. Um, so you're really, when you're buying Napa cabbage, you want to look for ones that are really bright, vibrant green. If it's like a white yellow color, it's not going to be as good and it'll be kind of bitter. This has a really mild flavor, but it's amazing and it's a cruciferous vegetable, cabbages. Cruciferous vegetables are something you should eat every day. According to any doctor that is knowledgeable in nutritionism, cabbage, you need cruciferous. So something cruciferous every day. So this will fill that box and it'll also fill the box of leafy greens. So you're checking two of your boxes, along with the mushrooms, which is a third box. How about that? So we're gonna get this washed because it's gross. <laughs> um, and we wanna let it chill for a bit. So we're gonna get the uh, salad spinner out. I can remember where I put it. And I'm actually gonna probably wash all of it because then I can just put it in the fridge and use it later. So usually if you're using cabbage like this, this one's a really loose head. Sometimes they're really tightly packed. This is a really loose one. Um, but usually they're like hard. So what you can do is just pull off a branch at a time and use what you need. But if you need to really give it a good wash, like this one, because I can see evidence of bug, um, you're going to want to just tear it all off and clean it really well. So I might actually even rinse this first and then put it in the salad spinner and let it go again. some time there. sure you clean it well <laughs> to avoid such scary instances that scar you for life. I need to start cooking so I can be a fit vegan. 
There you go. Currently a chunky vegan. It takes time, you know, you got to start somewhere. So you're starting somewhere. Everybody is in their own place and first step is wanting to do it. So good for you. <laughs> all right, we're going to put this all in here now. We're going to leave it whole for the moment because I'm going to cut it later, but I want to just get it really clean. So we're going to just fill this up with water. the spinner. You can get one of these things, by the way. This is just an OXO. You can buy one of these on Amazon for under 20 bucks, and you'll use it all the time, especially if you're doing plant-based. cheaper ones um, of different brands but this is a brand name one this is OXO which is a pretty common kitchen brand um, so I think we got this one for $19.99 free shipping so it's pretty sweet all right you can see a lot of the water a lot more water came out get all that so we're gonna dump that one more time I'm gonna spin it one more go and then I'm gonna let it just chill on the side while we go about our business Mala bracelet. I got a new one this week. It's all black. I like it better than this one. If I'm honest. <laughs> Spin my pretty. Okay. You're spinning so much you're going to make me dizzy. Let's check to see if there's not a ton of water. So little. Now we can just let our lettuce hang out, or our cabbage, excuse me. It's not lettuce, it is cabbage -y. And we'll get on to the next thing. So next up, we got baby bok choy. And we're only going to use one of these today, I think. I'm going to save the other one for a stir fry.
Okay, so if you didn't have baby bok choy, you could also use spinach or kale or any other type of thing you might want to try. Um, but it just adds another leafy green and another good crunch. And the greens on this will wilt down, unlike the cabbage. So it has a different profile once it's in the, the broth. So what you're going to do, similar to the cabbage, is just pull all the outer leaves off. You could use regular bok choy if you don't have baby bok choy also. And they're just so tiny down at the bottom. I usually leave the last little bit in the middle because it's usually kind of bitter. So I just toss that. And we're going to just clean this real quick. It's not very dirty. Sometimes they're full of dirt, but this one's actually pretty good. I'm going to give it a rinse. Not at turbo speeds. Oh my gosh, I saw some YouTube video uh, about a week and a half ago, I think. Some guy was like showing off the coolest toilet gadgets, and I don't know why, but I clicked it. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> um, one of them was like this crazy high powered bidet that was so ridiculously powerful. The guy was like, don't ever turn this up to fatal setting, as he called it. It was like fatal, which is six, because it will probably kill you. <laughs> and uh, he showed it like in his bathroom. He turned it on, fatal. And uh, he put it up facing his like shower wall from his toilet and turned it on. And he stood in the shower with like goggles and a mask on and a shower cap. And it looked like, you know, in like those movies where they're spraying people down in prison with a hose and it's like so crazy, they're you know like, oh my gosh, it was like that. <laughs> but meant for your, your behind. It's like, who would buy these things? Who buys these things? <laughs> it, was, it was entertaining to say the least. self-esteem and I'm already vegan so I most of the time find it hard to want to be fit but I just want to do it now so I can look more sexy well whatever your reason is good for you you do your thing <laughs> it's good you have high self-esteem that's important in life I love bok choy I don't know if I spelled that right you did you did spell it right damn his butt is gonna be extra clean yeah <laughs> a little more clean than I care to know about <laughs> Yeah, he was saying, he's like, I'll probably not use this, or it'll be like on, you know, one. <laughs> so with baby bok choy, this part is kind of similar to a cabbage, like a green cabbage. And this leafy bit is really similar to spinach. So I like to cut right along that bit and separate, oops, totally missed, separate the leaf from the cabbagey bit. Because um, they'll cook differently, and so I kind of like to treat them separately. So you just kind of run your knife in a triangle fashion, separating each piece. And unfortunately, there's no quick way about this. You kind of have to do it by hand. But if you're not as picky, you could just chop it all and do it in one go, like not worry about it. But I'm picky, so I have the time. <laughs> but you could totally just chop this into like thin strips and go to town and it'd be fine. So what we're going to do here is, this is going to be like our leafy spinach instead of spinach because I ate it all in my smoothie or I drank it all this morning. <laughs> I forgot to get more. We're just going to cut this into like, I don't know, something like that. Just some chunks. Nothing too major. And then for the ends here, you want to cut off the, the end that's got like the stem. I got this in my mouth. I think I got like manly fur. And my nose is just dull. Ugh. <laughs> so the end of bok choy, this is kind of the difficult part. People don't know how to prepare it. Is that this end's really thick and this end's really thin. So a way to combat that is to slice it like this. Just on kind of a bias into thin strips. And it kind of will resemble celery when we're done with it. See? But now it's thin enough that it's all kind of the same width, so it'll all cook the same. So that's how you do that. Pretty tricky, eh? <laughs> so we're not going to use, that's our garbage piece. We probably won't use 
all of this is whole pieces because I kind of want to do thin slices of stuff here because it's ramen I think thin slices are kind of better so we're gonna kind of shred it up like that and um, we'll leave some chunky but most of the white bits will shred so we'll have a little mix of textures which will be nice in the finished product so always cut away from yourself when you're doing this so you don't hack your fingers off and message me later that I won't get because I quit social media like lace I chopped my fingers off and I'll be like damn that sucks just don't just don't chop your fingers off Cabbage and bok choy has like the nicest sound when you cut it. I've been watching, um, been learning some new cooking techniques, mostly uh, Japanese ramen and um, like buck buckwheat noodles, which is soba. Um, what else have I been learning? I've been learning sesame bread, which is a Japanese thing. Um, lots of the different Japanese cuisine. Uh, anyway, I've been learning a bunch of this stuff, and there's this guy that I really like to watch uh, called Peaceful Cuisine, and he doesn't talk at all during his videos. It's just the sounds of him working on the food, and some food just has the nicest, nicest auditory things about it. He has a really good microphone, I think, in his kitchen. Like, my microphone in my kitchen blows. So, <laughs> you're probably not getting the same experience, but I do really enjoy watching that. It's really nice, like, late at night, and kind of, like, wind down and watch Peaceful Cuisine and learn something new, and also listen to the sounds of the kitchen. It's kind of like being in the kitchen while someone else cooks, you know? It's just kind of relaxing. It's the best way I can describe it. Are you currently a chef anywhere? Uh, no, I am not. I am not a chef. I am hoping to get my health coach uh, license soon, sometime early next year. And I also hope to get my plant-based nutrition certification, but I am not a chef. I am all self-taught and just kind of learned from the internet and watching the Food Network and the Cooking Channel and lots of overseas cooking shows and a lot of foreign chefs. Um, I really like to do Japanese, I like to do Korean, and I really like Mexican. So those are like the really go-tos for plant-based, and uh, I really love making that type of food, so I watch a lot of that. But and I'm not professionally trained. Thank you for that host, Hillian. Steals idea, bring it to Twitch. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> that'd be pretty cool to do, but I wouldn't steal his idea. I mean, it's basically ASMR cooking is really what it is, which, you know, it would be neat. I just need a better microphone in the kitchen. If I had my Audio Technica in the kitchen, I could totally do that, but it's bolted to my desk. And I either need to get another one or just need to get a stand on it to move it around. And I actually went down and used my recording studio this week for my uh, quitting social media video. And I took it down and my camera, got down there and it wouldn't work with my laptop. And I spent an hour and 40 minutes in the recording studio trying to get my fucking microphone to work and my camera and it just would not. It was so frustrating. So I was like, great. So I booked the studio. So I recorded the whole video on my phone with crappy audio. It sucked. But I unmounted it the other day for that and I just, it was all so much trouble. <laughs> I don't know if I could be bothered to do it again. <laughs> wow, you're so professional. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so we got a whole carrot here. Chop off the gnarly bit at the end. These are my gnarly bits of cabbage we don't want, or bok choy. I keep getting all my stuff mixed up. Yeah, I've been really into cooking for years. Um, I think when Daniel and I first started dating, I was 19, and 
I couldn't cook a damn thing. I could make like a casserole that was made with like stovetop stuffing and frozen chicken and frozen vegetables and that instant rice. That was about <laughs> my level of skill. And uh, Daniel was really a good cook and we ended up watching a lot of cooking shows together and I slowly started getting into cooking myself. And so I've been cooking for about 14 years now and I love cooking. It's so relaxing to me and there's something about making a meal for someone else that I find pretty joyful. So yeah, I've been, I've been at it a little while. <laughs> I went through a lot of phases too, like I went through one, this is a really cool tool by the way, this is like a, um, a I don't know what to call it, a noodler. You know those machines where you like spiralize zucchini noodles and stuff? It's kind of like that but it's more quick application for presentation or slaws or works really well for ramen. I'll show you what I mean. So we just go right down the carrot. Well, what the heck, it didn't work just now. There we go. I didn't push hard enough. But you can see it like makes little thin strips, which are really nice in a ramen. So uh, yeah, it's a cool little tool. But anyway, I went through phases of cooking. So I went through some where I um, learn to make bread. Like I went on a bread rampage for, I don't know, six months and I was making homemade every type of bread you can think of from focaccia to bagels to donuts to pizza to sandwich bread, like everything. <laughs> and that was really interesting. So I learned a lot doing stuff like that. And I kind of just go through phases of what I want to cook. And you know, this past year, why is the skin, the skin's being really stubborn. Um, this past year, it's been plant-based vegan. I'm gonna have to like, normally this thing works really well and right now it's being a bitch because people are watching, I know. It's like when you're golfing and you're on the first tee and everybody's staring at you so you whiff it. <laughs> uh, sounds very upsetting. This thing, it kinda is upsetting me right now. Like, what the heck, man? We're gonna peel the carrot. Normally I don't like to peel because a lot of the nutrition is in the skin, so we're gonna have to peel and like slice because it's just being stubborn. I don't know, it looks kind of bent out of shape. Like maybe I've overused it. It's so cheap. I think maybe I've just ruined it. <laughs> Which certainly could be a possibility. Yeah, it's being really stubborn. Normally it just comes apart instantly and it's like requiring me to pull it apart right now and I don't know why. It's one of those things. I'll suffer through. I'll stop bitching about it. <laughs> but this makes much shorter work even so than julienning your carrot. Julienning a carrot basically means julienne anything is super thin strips. I think it's a French word. Don't quote me. I think, <laughs> I think it's French. But to julienne something is to do it very thin in usually two inch strips. So this is kind of a method of julienning, but in a hurry. I can't remember how much this thing was. It was on Amazon and I think we got it for like less than 10 bucks. So, you know, it's replaceable. I just didn't want to buy a spiralizer because it takes up room and I have to wash it. <laughs> And this I can just throw in the dishwasher with like forks. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those convenience tools. <laughs> Welcome back, Athlon. How are the munchkins? Hopefully not driving you too nuts. See, it worked pretty good. It just was being a butt, getting started. It has its moments. Make short work of things. And then you have this really sad floppy carrot. <laughs> and then your hands are orange. It's okay. So I like to cut this, the strips up so they're kind of like bite-sized bits. They'll kind of twirl around with your ramen noodles so it's not a huge deal if you don't cut them but I kind of like them in smaller pieces so you can more easily pick them up with chopsticks when you're eating your ramen. So we're going to push the carrots aside. It's 
another thing I need to get in the kitchen besides a better microphone. I really need to get some studio lights. I used to be able to cook with like just natural light, which really helps make the food look better. But we're facing north and so our apartment is so dark all the time, we can't do that now. So I have to have like the overhead lights on and it makes a weird color on things. So I need to get like a bunch of studio lights in the kitchen. I have one pretty giant one at my desk, but it's really awkward to move. Goodbye, sad carrot. Yes, it was sad, wasn't it? All right, we have one zucchini. We're gonna give it a little washy wash. So ramen's pretty cool because you can really top it with whatever you want. And um, you know, anything you're in the mood for or anything you might want on it, you can do that. Uh, I really like the mix we're doing right now. And I also like to add corn, which sounds really weird in a ramen, but corn and ramen is fucking bomb. <laughs> And uh, I first had it at a place in Seattle called Kiki Ramen. And if you haven't been there, I highly recommend it. They do really good ramen. And um, they do corn. It's one of the add-ons you can get is fresh corn. And it's a little complicated to eat if you're not regular with chopsticks. But, you know, they also have a spoon, so you can do it that way too. But it has just lovely sweetness that it adds, especially if you do a ramen that has like a black garlic or something in it. The corn really balances that out. So we're gonna do the same thing to this zucchini with our little shreddy mabobber. Thin little pieces. The reason that it also is nice to cook this stuff in really thin pieces is because then you can just blanch your veg when you're ready to do your ramen um, in seconds. Like it literally takes like 30 seconds to cook the stuff or you can just put it in raw and eat it that way. Either way is fine um, and it's really good. So if you're into having your veg raw, or if you're on a raw sort of diet, mostly, um, you know, ramen's obviously, the broth's not raw, but <laughs> you could kind of mix and match some raw and not raw to get a little more nutrition out of it. Because anytime you cook something, some of that nutrition leaches into whatever you're cooking it in. And uh, I like to cook the veg blanched in the broth so that nutrition is still available to me. But if you're not doing that, um, you know, just putting this stuff in raw on top of your fresh ramen is a really good way to keep all those nutrients. And because it's sliced so thin, it doesn't taste like you're eating, you know, a raw carrot on top of your ramen. So just another option, especially good if you're in a hurry, you know, it cuts down on things you have to cook. But I usually just take like a big giant spoon with like a slotted spoon and just throw all these in the broth for 30 seconds at a time all together and it's done. <clears throat> you love carrots? Carrots are really good for you. Carrots are especially awesome for your eyes. Uh, they're full of uh, beta carotene which is really good for that. Um, it also helps with your nail growth and nail strength and hair growth and uh, it's really one of those vital things your body needs. So eat those carrots. <laughs> I love carrots too. I eat a lot of carrots actually. I really like making a smoothie that is uh, carrot and peach. And I don't know if you've ever had that combination, but it's pretty awesome. Peaches and carrots go really well together. And if you're new to like vegetable smoothies, that's a really good starting one is carrot and peach. What's your favorite way to eat carrots, Athlon? I think I, think I really like them every way. I don't think I've found a way I don't like carrots. <laughs> I think they're all good. <laughs> so you can kind of see when you start to get down to the seeds in the core, we're going to not shred into that. So you can see it right here. It's kind of got the little ribs going this way versus this bit that's still white. And you can feel it too. This is going to waterlog when you cook it. So I don't like to use that. Oh, that's my timer for my run. 30 minutes just flew by. Okay, so we're going to just discard the, the seeds from the middle. And I got this jammed in my peeler. <laughs> okay, so our ramen broth is done.
see how good this looks. We are going to add tamari, which is gluten-free soy sauce. It also has 50% less sodium is the version that I got, but tamari can come in regular sodium as well, but tamari is gluten-free soy sauce. I think it has a better flavor than soy sauce, so if you haven't tried tamari, go for it. That's not what I wanted. I wanted a teaspoon. Um, yeah. So we're going to add two teaspoons, or close to, not all the way, of tamari our broth and we're going to give it all a stir and then we're going to taste getting a ramen facial <laughs> that was as hot as hell I really don't want to burn my face off I like the carrots the same way I like celery raw. Celery is so good, except in juice. Celery and juice is a no-go. Some people really love celery juiced. I find celery really salty, and I can't really eat it raw. It just tastes like salt because I'm on a low sodium diet for my, my autoimmune system. Um, when I eat celery, all I can taste is the salt. And it's really funny because celery only has like, I think 10, I wanna say 10 grams of salt per stick, which is like nothing but I eat probably around 250 milligrams of sodium a day. So for me, it's like, whoa. And to compare that, the average person in like America eats about 2,500 to 3,500 milligrams of sodium a day, and I eat 250. So you really start noticing salt when you cut out salt. Ooh, that's good. I think it will need a little more soy sauce or tamari, but we'll actually add that um, when we serve it. So for now, it's good. You don't want to put a ton of tamari in now or soy sauce because when you boil it again later when you're ready to eat it, it will reduce down and then your broth will be too salty. So you kind of want to add just enough to give it a little flavor now and then later when you make it, you add like a teaspoon of tamari right over the noodles before you put your broth back in the bowl. Soy sauce, don't tell me it's better than soy sauce, really. I'll buy it. It is, yeah, it's really good. Um, tamari is really nice. It's got a really nice flavor. It's a, almost a little, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not sure how to describe it. I think you just have to try it. But it tastes very similar to soy sauce. Like it's, most people probably wouldn't even notice a difference, but it's better for you. Not a fan of soy sauce? You should try tamari. You might like it. You might not, but you might. <laughs> I don't know, you, you seem like you're picky about a few things, Athlon, so I'm guessing you're probably not going to like it, but if you eat any like Japanese or, you know, Korean or Chinese food, you eat a lot of soy sauce. Do you, you probably don't like other soy products then either. Ramen facial, steam it. <laughs> yeah. I do like celery in stew though. I like celery in stew, it's really good, yeah. I usually put celery in like a soup or a stew or things like that. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so we got our shred of zucchini and our shred of carrot and we'll just push this away and we need to attend to this just for a second so if you don't have one of these you can use a spider it'll also work and this will probably be better actually for this this is a spider it's often used in like deep frying things I find all sorts of uses for it. It's really good for fishing things out of broth. So we're just going to pull out all this veg that we're not going to be eating. And I probably need a bowl to put it in. So this is where the quick fit comes in because you don't have to strain. You can just pull out the big chunks of stuff. So we're going to get out all the big bits of garlic and the ginger mushroom, which you could actually, if you wanted to, you could slice up that mushroom and eat it, but I really dislike boiled mushrooms. Some people don't 
seem to have that aversion, so if you're one of those people, you know, more power to you. <laughs> but I'm going to pass. So we got everything out of there, and um, that's it. The broth is ready to go. And that'll probably be four servings, maybe five servings of, of broth for ramen. So that'll be a couple nights worth. All right, so now we got to get our shiitakes ready to go. And we're just kind of looking right now for any excess dirt. Which, like I said, the shiitakes today looked pretty bomb, so not a lot to worry about, but some days that are dirty. Alright, so I'm going to pull the stems out of all these. You could eat the stems if you want, but you would need to cut them very thin because it's really woody. Um, I don't prefer the stems of shiitake, so I remove them. But if you didn't want to waste, waste not, want not, that sort of thing. Like, So you can see how thick it is. They're like hard. This one's gonna be stubborn to get out, I can feel it. But you can see it's like, that's a firm thing, especially when you compare it to the mushroom. So you gotta be into that sort of thing, and I'm not. <laughs> Some of them are thicker than others. All right, so now that we got all the stems out, we're going to just do strips. I've been eating a lot of shiitakes lately. Uh, normally I'm just all about the creminis, but shiitakes are awesome. I actually looked at my takis today, which are like really big mushrooms. They're like this big, and they have a stem that's probably about this big, and they're mostly white. Uh, I'm not talking about portobellos, so those of you that are like, is that portobello? No. Um, this is a Japanese mushroom, my takis, and uh, they're really common in uh, soups over there. Um, but here, they had some today, and I was surprised to actually see them, but they looked just terrible. They're supposed to be really white, and these were like really brown and kind of weird colored, and I was thinking, I don't think I want to eat that. <laughs> All right, so that's our shiitake. Get your vitamin D on with those shiitakes. Yeah, and it'll be kind of like your meaty factor. They'll have like a meaty texture in the ramen, so you'll think you're getting something meaty, even though you're not. <laughs> Nom, 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 indeed. All right, we got our cabbage here, our Chinese Napa cabbage. And I'm trying to decide how much cabbage I want to use. We're gonna go with about that. So I'm gonna get rid of any of these really small ones that are really yellow. You can see the color comparison. Uh, I feel like those taste bitter, and I don't like bitter. So I'm going to pull those out. And I'm going to line up the ends of all these. And they kind of nest with each other pretty nice, because it was, you know, once together. So it's not too hard to line them all up. So all the stemmy ends. I'm going to flip it over here. And I'm going to remove the end of all of those. Just like that. then for this you could use green cabbage or red cabbage or napa cabbage or chinese cabbage whatever this is napa cabbage sometimes called chinese cabbage sometimes it's called i can't even remember there's another name for it it's got three names <laughs> but you could use any type of cabbage for this and get your cruciferous vegetables in that way so we're going to do a thin slice Also do like big squares of this either way would be really good so that's our cabbage yum yum
plates. Um, they are stoneware plates, and they all have a different pattern. So this is actually the name of the pattern. But they all look a little different, <laughs> but they all go together. So you can serve them all on one table, and it doesn't look funny. But some of them I like a lot more than others, and other ones I really dislike. So <laughs> I was trying to find one that I wanted to use. Don't hold your fingers like that when you chop things. I'm not sure what you mean. What, how was I holding them? I've never cut my finger once, and I've been cooking for 14 years. Or at least never cut it chopping. The last time I cut my finger chopping was when I was seven. <laughs> and I was cutting an apple like an idiot. <laughs> but I usually try to hold the knife by the end and keep my fingers down so you don't trim off the tip of your finger, but I know sometimes I don't, but I keep the knife far enough away from my hands that I don't have to worry about it. But yeah, I don't have, you know, professional knife skills. I know. <laughs> all right, so we're just gonna load all this on this plate. So I am meal prepping this. So you saw the ramen noodles I'm gonna use, and um, we'll have that when uh, the time comes tonight for dinner. I was going to make some for lunch, but I don't think my I have enough broth that reduced down a little more than I thought it was going to, so I don't have enough to make lunch today with it, so I think I'm going to have to make a burrito. <laughs> burrito! Japanese for dinner, burrito for lunch. Seems pretty usual around here. Especially since they still don't have romaine in the store, I've been having like serious salad withdrawals. <laughs> it's been terrible. Alright, so we'll get our mushrooms. So this will be enough veg for two nights of ramen for two people, and um, I'm going to also add corn, and I'm just going to use frozen corn, so that'll be all the vegetables that I'll do in the ramen, and um, so we'll just do up half of those tonight and half the next night, and now you're ready to eat ramen for two days. <laughs> so that's quickie ramen. Not too tough, and uh, I don't know, how long were we live? I mean, I think I've... I spent a little more time talking. We did a, a pre-chat as well. My boss is like not working. I told you I'd messed everything up when I changed my name. Yeah, okay, my boss is like, nope, fuck you. <laughs> I need to fix that. When I changed my name everywhere, it just messed up things all over the place, so I really got to get that fixed. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so that's Quickie Ramen. And um, now we can enjoy that for two nights for dinner. So thank you for watching, and uh, be sure to check out my new food blog, foodfluent.com. If you haven't seen it already, I'll post a link. And uh, there I'll be doing free recipes for dishes such as these, vegan, plant-based, nutritious, and delicious. And I'll also be doing restaurant reviews for the city of Seattle, anywhere else I may travel to, and um, adventures around the city, as well as some gaming stuff here and there. So check it out, and uh, please be sure to follow me here if you haven't already, and subscribe to me on YouTube at Food Fluent. Thanks for the stream. Oh, you're welcome, Screaming Jelly Bean. Thanks for watching. So I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to go ahead and host somebody, so if you want to stick around and follow along, welcome to do that, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.